Today on Cyberbytes, we're joined by Morali, CEO and co-founder of Andromeda. Andromeda is tackling one of the most misunderstood frontiers in cybersecurity, AI and identity. We'll cut through the market confusion on how urgent AI threats really are and dive into how AI is reshaping both the risks and defenses in identity. Let's dive in. Okay, and we're live. So this is the first episode of our Black Hat series. And I'm pleased to welcome Morali, who is the co-founder and CEO at Andromeda. Great to have you on. How are you? Hey, thank you very much for inviting me, and especially for the first one for your Black Hat <laughs> series. Exciting thank stuff. You. Well, thank you for coming. Where did you fly in from? I'm not too far. I'm in San Francisco. Yep. So just now a flight to get here. Great, so great. It's Love been it. an easy flight. Unlike some of you who have to come a long way, so <laughs> it's uh, much easier. Yeah, quick route for you. Yeah. Cool. Well, the way I like to start these podcasts, Rally, is rewind the clock. So could you tell the audience who you are and the problem that you guys solve? Yeah, I'm the founder and CEO of Andromeda. Uh, before this, I started a company, Avi Networks, in 2013. Mm -hmm. There we focused on application load balancing in AppSec. Uh, went after um, legacy um, F5 uh, domain. Um, in a six-year journey, we had uh, uh, did very well. We were at the five of the biggest banks in the U.S. Many tech companies were using us. We were going in for our Series D um, fundraising when VMware approached us for an uh, acquisition. Um, we took the exit, and I was there running the business for about two and a half years, and then took a year break before starting Andromeda. Great. Yeah, and what is the problem you guys are solving now with Andromeda? Yeah, in Andromeda, we are focusing on identity security. Mm -hmm. okay. The challenge right now is if you look at all the threats that are going on, about 80% of all security compromises are stacked with an identity compromise. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's a huge number. Okay. And if you, depending on what report you see, about 90% of all enterprises have had at least one security breach in the last 15 months. Okay. The, the issue is not that uh, the security breaches are going to happen. The issue is, the business impact. Okay, what really happens right now is, if you look at it, most identities don't use the entitlements they have. Now, the number of accesses they have that defines how big is going to be your business impact, and mm -hmm. that's the biggest challenge. Got it. And uh, there's no easy problem to solve this. I mean, it's a, it's a complex problem. Okay, the number of employee workforce continues to grow. In addition to that, now with the level of automation, you have a high number of uh, service accounts, service principles, uh, typically industry calls it non-human identities. Okay. And with the advent of identity AI, the mm -hmm. number of identities you have to manage is going to be very high. Mm -hmm. okay. It's growing in the order of 10x, 20x, 30x. Okay. On the other side, there is uh, every enterprise, the amount of applications they use continues to grow. Mm -hmm. And especially with modern applications, they have fine-grained entitlements to make sure that you can grant what is required mm -hmm. and managing what an identity needs uh, for uh, what permissions they need is impossible to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to solve this problem, uh, it's not a unique problem, it's been a problem for a while. To solve this, unfortunately, there are legacy solutions that focus primarily on on-prem solutions. And there are, there are a number of newer tools that come in the market. They're all primarily focusing on narrow use cases. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody's looking at it holistically. And the challenge with solving narrow use cases, it increases the operational complexity for yeah. all the customers. Mm -hmm. They have to stitch the context across all of them. Yeah. Okay. And that's just the sort of the landscape we saw two years ago when we started the company. And looking at it, looking at it in a different lens, trying to see how we can solve this where it's, the solution is holistic from a customer point of view mm -hmm. and uses context. Yeah. And, and what does context mean here? Okay. And nearly every application, nearly every cloud infrastructure, they have deep telemetry of what, what somebody logged in, what they're actually doing. Okay. We look at all this log data, um, audit log data, and we use that to build AI models, to build context, okay, behavior context. And that's what we use to power the automation, to, pro to provide a holistic solution to an end customer. Yeah, and if you're a doctor, um, what symptoms would your customers be facing? What are the key symptoms that would allow them to use this type of solution or need yeah, this solution? Yeah, great question. Um, so the problem is today, what happens today is um, if you have a compromise, then you need to figure out how to solve it. Okay, 
So you can solve the compromise, you can find the solution and fix it. But how do you, how do you prevent it? Okay, mm -hmm. The biggest issue is prevention right now. And if you don't prevent it, you're going to have a bigger impact. Okay, and, and what we're offering a solution is to make sure that when they have a problem, the impact is very low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. The prevention piece. Prevention piece. Yeah. And we touched, you touched it there, the threat landscape and how that's changed. And with enterprise adoption, um, obviously things are changing and it's, it's very fluid at the moment. How, how have you seen things change maybe over the last 18 months from or tw 24 months since you started to now? What have been the, some of the key changes that you've seen in the landscape? Oh, uh, it's been a huge change. Okay. When we started the company, there was nothing called identity that didn't exist. Okay, yep. ChatGPT wasn't there. Mm -hmm. okay. And the threat landscape was growing. The number of compromises were increasing. But now with the advent of AI and agentic AI, the number of the, the barrier to a compromise reduces is one problem. And the sophistication of compromise is increasing because the attackers are able to use agentic AI and other AI techniques to make a much more complicated, a much more comprehensive attack. Mm -hmm. So number of attacks is, is increasing. And sophistication and how, uh, how they're able to do this also is increasing, which is going to make it much harder for enterprises to protect themselves. Yeah. And what I'm hearing in the market is obviously is a massive problem um, and the adoption in enterprise is increasing. But it seems that there might be some like resistance or like uncertainty around how or when to adopt these type of solutions. Is there a piece of advice that you would give to companies that are leveraging AI in their stacks of how they should be approaching that and how they should be looking at that today? Yeah, see, this is always a challenge with security, right? Uh, security is an insurance policy, okay? You, you can always say, I can do it tomorrow. Yeah. Because it, uh, unless it hits you, unless you have a compromise, it's always, yeah, I can wait for this. Okay, that's a, always a challenge with security. But uh, right now, with the level of compromises happening, and especially with the adoption of more and more AI tools, if, uh, if the security leaders and the enterprises don't look at it seriously, there's going to be a huge problem. Because mm -hmm. if you don't set the fundamentals right, it's very hard to retrofit it later. Yeah. That's the biggest challenge. Yeah. And security leaders in the space, what are some of the key steps that they can take from like an identity focus and thinking about AI to help with that prevention? What can they be thinking about now that would help with that? So I think the primary thing we should be focusing on right now is the first step is to figure out where they are okay. Okay. in terms of an identity landscape, where they are, uh, how secure they are, how insecure they are. Okay. That's the first step I think we need to figure it out. Because okay. right now, and in every organization, what happens is nobody wants to take something else out that exists there because they don't know if they want to break something else. Okay. So the first step is to figure out using some tools they can get to figure out what of the current assets is actually used and not used. Mm -hmm. Because the biggest issue that is happening is, is dormant risk. Okay. Things that haven't been, that have, was created a while ago that hasn't been used, maybe before your time in the company, something already existed. You don't remove it because you don't know it's going to be something else. And that's the dormant risk that they have to take care of. Mm. And, and you mentioned, so 24 months ago when you started in the company, there was no chat GPT, right? And things have changed. So has the vision changed since you've started the company? What does that look like today? Are there any changes there? Oh yeah, I think right now, if you think of, I mean, we, our vision of the product and how we expected the customers to use our product was 24 months ago to what you would do when you start a current company right now, completely different, mm. right? When we started the company, you build the experience for the user based on, you have a UI, you provide them a dashboard, and they tell them how to navigate. Mm -hmm. Okay, that whole concept is gone right now. Now the whole concept is you don't do those things. You provide them a, a chat level interface where they can ask questions in English language. Mm. Okay, and you should be able to interpret that and provide them a response they're looking for. Okay, that completely has changed mm. of how what you provide to an end, end customer right now is completely changed right now. Yeah, it's, it's crazy that evolution, as I say. Yeah, yeah I think I saw a stat, um, it was the NVIDIA CEO who was saying that in the next five years, I think more millionaires will be made in the next five years than in the 20 of the whole of the internet boom very with true. AI. Very true, very yeah. true. And, and the, the two things happen with AI. One is to build a solution 21, 24 months ago or three years ago, the amount of people you needed 
is drastically reduced mm. right now. Okay, you can actually build a meaningful solution with a far less number of people yeah. with AI. Yeah, I think I've seen companies that have been like five, ten person companies have been sold for multi millions. Definitely. Just the the, the the and the barrier has gone right. So where someone that had to be have to had an idea, then have an engineering team to be technical to build it. There's no barrier there, right? Yeah. Anyone can have that creative idea that can then go and build using AI. Yeah, if you know what you want to build and you know how to interact with AI to to build what you want, you can build it much easier. Yeah, and rewinding back to your your background, so second time uh, being involved in a founding startup. Um, what are maybe some of the key learnings that you took from first time and that exit into setting up? Um, second time? Yeah, I think um, I'm a technologist at heart. Okay. Being a technologist, you always think that building a product is the hardest problem. Mm. Okay. Uh, especially with AI, that is even reduced now if you know what you want to build. Okay. The bigger problem is, um, is go to market. Yeah. Is, is explaining, trying to figure out how you can message what you're creating. First is how do you make sure that your customers know what you're building? Mm. Okay, what pain point you're trying to solve? Okay, that's the biggest challenge. Okay, and if you can't articulate how you're helping them, it doesn't really help. Mm -hmm. What you build. Yeah, yeah, and so so on that then. So the challenge piece and the go-to-market piece, I hear that a lot because we work with a lot of early stage startups. It's really difficult to to get right. Um, is there any so in that piece of Andromeda? Is there any bits that you've then? maybe learn again on the go-to-market piece to, I don't know, you failed and tried or bits that you've learned um, in the recent times that you would pick up it's, on? Yeah, I, um, I don't think I will ever claim that I know this well. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, for me, it's always a learning experience. Yeah. Okay. And ultimately in the go-to-market, at least I'm not an expert in go-to-market. For me, it's experimentation. Yeah. You have to try different things mm. okay, and see what works. Okay. And again, when you try different things, you need metrics. Mm. You need to know what's working, what's not working. Yeah. Okay. And that's important. Yeah. Okay. And that's something that I'm learning as we go along saying, okay, you're going to do this experiment, then what is the metrics you're going to use to evaluate if it's working or not working? Yeah. That's important. Because I feel like you can see the Wiz playbook, for example, or try and follow those, but every company is so different and there's yeah. no right way of doing it, I guess. I mean, everybody now says, right, use a Wiz playbook, use a Wiz playbook. <laughs> and if you ask the Wiz folks, they don't really have a playbook. Mm. Right? They did a few things and it worked and they went, right? And that's really what it is. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the, the data piece, knowing the metrics, trial and error is a big part of the, the go-to market. It is a big part. And um, future looking then. So what's on the horizon for you guys over the next maybe uh, 12 months, rest of this year or the ne into next year for the next 12 months? Yeah, I think the big thing right now is customers' adoption of um, Agentic AI is drastically increasing. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I think the leaders trying to are trying to con control how fast it drops, but you can't stop this. Okay, it has to, and you, they have to give the freedom to the people to use it. Okay, but how do you figure out how do you bring security into this is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's every now there are security companies all claiming there are solutions for it. <laughs> okay, and uh, and what I've learned over the years is having a solution and operationalizing a solution are two different things. Mm -hmm. And you need to build a solution that an end user can operationalize. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not a useful solution. Mm -hmm. And this is an evolving field right now. And how how you provide uh, the security leaders the right tools as they bring in more agentic AI uh, into the company, how do you secure it? Mm -hmm. okay. And that's going to become a very big issue. Yeah. I mean, there's already challenges for enterprises with uh, managing identities. Now, with mm -hmm. agentic AI, the number of IITs is going to become 30x, 40x more. Yeah. Okay. How do you manage it? Is how do you protect against? It is going to be a challenge because yeah. agentic. Once you bring agentic AI, if somebody is put in a compromise inside that, the whole in, everything inside is compromised, right? Mm. Okay, and that's going to be the biggest challenge. Yeah, for sure. And the AI piece, it, it seems like a, just a, a saturated term in the security world. How? How do you focus around like standing out in the ecosystem, uh, maybe to customers and partners that you work with? Because everyone seems to be sprinkling that AI dust on their solutions right now. Yeah, the, the reality is AI is an overused term. Mm. Okay, now, when you think of AI, when you say AI and security, what does it mean? Is AI securing um, 
identities or vice versa. Like there are companies who are building security for AI, mm-hmm. and the company is using AI in security. Okay. Um, in our, in our case, we are a combination of both. We are definitely using AI inside security. Okay. And a core of our platform is based on AI. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's the only way we believe we can provide holistic security to the end customer. Now, when you use AI in security, AI can do lots of magic. Okay. And in security, the one of the biggest lessons I've learned is if you can't explain what you are doing, okay, it's nobody believes you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So explainability is very important when you think of AI. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, in everything that our researchers are doing in the company, I say, okay, you can build the coolest um, AI, um, AI models, but if, I, if, if the AI model's response can't be explained to an end customer, nobody's going to believe you. Mm. Okay, so explainability is very, very important. Yeah. Okay. That is the solution we are building and using AI instead of. Now, how do you protect customers who are using extensive AI? How do you protect that? Is a separate problem. Mm. And that is sort of where we are seeing what is it, how, are, how is agentic AI really going to get used? Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and how do you define what should agentic AI have in terms of the entitlements to what they can do? And that's going to become a big issue. Yeah. And I guess to wrap this up, so in, in your conversations with your current customers uh, in the enterprise, what are some maybe one or two of the, like, the key challenges that they're facing in today's market? We've discussed AI, obviously, that's important. But what else are they running into that you or other security vendors are, are potentially helping with in the identity space? So the biggest challenge every enterprise is facing right now is trying to figure out what entitlement should any identity have. Okay, that's the biggest challenge. Okay, and right now, they don't know how to solve it. Mm-hmm. Okay, either everybody gets everything they ever needed, okay, or if you constrain them, it impacts productivity. Okay, so trying to find the right balance as to what are the entitlements required for mm-hmm. identity is the biggest issue they're trying to solve. Yeah. And there's no good answer to it. Right? <laughs> yeah, as you say, it's trying to find the right balance. Yes. Yeah. Well, Morale, it's a pleasure to have you on. So thank you for coming on. Thank you very much for this conversation. (laughs) You're welcome and great to see you. Thank you.